Today I'm going to share some of my research with you because this work might have important implications for your teaching. My friend Dr. Ian Matheson and I have been researching graphic text because we are fascinated by how students comprehend graphic text, like this water cycle. Students need to use dynamic reading approaches for graphic text forms like maps, timelines, tables, and models. Even with this simple graphic text, effective readers need to choose an approach and continuously check in with themselves to see how well they understand their reading. For our study, the student participants read How an Eco-Friendly Fish Farm Operates, and we asked them to explain their thinking. We also measured their executive function skills, and we tested their comprehension. So, how do you think they read this? Nearly everyone started with the title in the top left corner. That's what I did. Probably you too. But where do you go after the title? Some of the students read left to right, top to bottom. You know why they did it. Because that's how they read a page in a chapter book. I just went, you know, standard and, you know, left to right, said one of the students. Almost half of the students read in a clockwise fashion, as you can see here. It's a good strategy for cyclical graphical text like the water cycle, but not here, because this strategy meant that the box information were read out of sequence. In the words of one student, I started in the top left like I usually read, and I go clockwise because it seems easier for me to read that way. For this particular graphic text, the most effective approach was to follow the arrows. It might be hard to see the arrows on your screen, so I'll highlight them for you. The arrows mark a somewhat convoluted path, but following the arrows is important because that's the path of the water filtration system. Those readers adjusted their reading strategies to fit the text as explained by this student. I was just mostly following the arrows going, hey, it goes this way, maybe I should. The big takeaway here is that students don't need to automatically know which strategy is best for each text. It would be great if they did, but what is even more important is that they're thinking about their thinking so they can determine if the strategy is working. We wanted to know about the students' executive function skills, so we measured those skills with the Dallas Kaplan Executive Function System. I'll show you my favorite task, the tower test, because I think it's the most fun. Simple rules, move this pile to this peg, but you can only move one ring at a time, and you can't put a ring on top of a smaller one. For example, this would be no bueno. Let me show you how it works. The little one has to go first, so I'll put them over here. I can't put this one on top, so it has to go on the far peg. The little one then goes on top to free up that peg. This one goes over here. The small one goes back home. This one goes in the middle, so the little one can jump on top. Now I've freed up the far peg. The little one hops on top. This one moves back home. Little one on top, okay. This one over, we're making progress now. Little one in the center peg, next one on the pile. Okay, well, now I'm stuck because all the rings are on the wrong peg. I should have used more planning. Uh, this is a little bit embarrassing. I'll start again here and explain a bit more while I try and solve this. You've probably heard executive function skills being compared to an air traffic controller. It's a set of skills that we use to manage our thoughts and actions and emotions. I'm not going to get into executive functioning very deeply. I'll save that for a different video, but I will say this. Executive function skills are essential for reading because we use shifting, inhibiting, and planning to navigate a text and ignore irrelevant information. We found that students who had the strongest planning and sorting skills did the best job comprehending the graphic text. It may seem strange that there's a relationship between solving the tower test and reading graphic text, but both tasks require the same foundational skills. Okay, I did it. Now we get to do a happy dance. So what can we do to improve executive function skills of our students? Well, a lot of executive function skills involve self-talk, so practice thinking aloud for your students. When you introduce a new text to the class, be sure to acknowledge the text features. Oh, I see a legend here. Now I know where to go if I find a symbol I don't recognize. Then brainstorm the reading strategies they already know, and then together decide which might be helpful for this text. Students can use post-it notes to highlight important textual information and make note of questions they might have. Students need to know that reading graphic text is an iterative process, which means that students should keep going back until they understand the text. For our study, even though students who chose an ineffective strategy initially were able to do well if they reviewed the text afterwards, you can hear that self-awareness in the ways the students explained their decisions to review. I would look back at some of them because, well, it had a word in there that I really didn't know. I recommend you teach students that graphic texts are like puzzles. We have to avoid the temptation to apply the first strategy we think of. 
Each text comes with its own challenges, so we have to be dynamic thinkers. Because we interact with graphic text online and IRL, helping students to make sense of graphic text means that we are helping them to make sense of the world. In the meantime, we're going to keep practicing the tower test.